Welcome to Between the Sharks. Today, we are going to start the process, resume the process, begin again, of resurrecting our 100-year-old-ish 1927 Ford Touring Body. What that means is, right now, we've got a bunch of parts. We've got a cowl over here, we've got the back half of the car over here, and we have the doors below this table. And on the table, we have what's left of the original subframe and the beginnings of a new subframe. And somehow or another, we are going to combine all of these things and make a car body back out of it. Here goes nothing. This one is going to be a bit of a puzzle. We're gonna to have to sort of work by burning a candle at both ends. And what I mean by that is we don't have anything totally solid to measure from. The body is in pieces. It did not fit together when I got it. The subframe that it was on had been split or broken, or maybe it was out of, made out of two cars. But as you can see right here, there is a piece of angle iron that is seaming our original subrail together that our body was mounted to. The problem we had was the back half was bolted on there were no doors with it, no front doors when I got it. And when I bought the front doors and tried to make them fit, on the passenger side, we were over an inch off. Unfortunately, that meant I had to remove the body from the subframe because it was no longer the right shape or right length. So I drilled out all the rivets on the body mounts that mounted it to this, separated all the pieces, and now we have to start working in reverse. Well, Considering the body is not whole, we can't really build a subframe to the body. And because the original subframe was not correct, we don't exactly have the information we need to build a brand new subframe. So we are going to work with all of the parts and pieces and clues that we have. This unfortunately was unsalvageable. Not only is it split and inaccurate, it is quite rotten. Here, the other side doesn't look any better. And the way someone in the past hundred years did this was to bolt some galvanized pipe to the bottom of the subrails. Better than nothing, I guess it kind of kept the car from totally falling apart. Unfortunately, they didn't do a great job. And I also don't think, even though they did get this bend correct, it seems that when they put it together that the rails themselves have a curve this way, which is not correct. So let's dive in and take a look at what we have left and what measurements I was able to sort of take. Even though they're inaccurate, I went ahead and marked things before I took them apart. Before I took everything apart, I laid the body and subframe on this piece of plywood. I marked this center line all the way back, measured from either side, and did my best to mark in Sharpie the profile. Now, it's only kind of relevant because if you look, our profile, our inner profile here, is different from our profile back here, and what we are using to rebuild is going to be this one and a half inch by one and a half inch box steel. Let's see if you can see these. So I took measurements at the width at this cross piece and the width at that cross piece. And I included the distance from our front edge to where those things belong. Now, this is only a general idea because our break where this thing was split and put in with angle iron is where this cross piece was and its relationship to our front cross piece which I cut out from here so I could reuse was not accurate to begin with because and we know that because our doors did not fit in the front so again these are just general guidelines to help us get started so far I have taken our inch and a half by inch and a half box tube pie cut it bent it, and tack welded it back together so it is in the general shape of our original subrails. So if you take a look here, 
That's our original. If I slide that off, it suddenly reveals that we now have a box steel subframe rail in the general shape of the original. I took that, I mirrored it, I laid another piece over there, I laid that piece on top of this one so that this piece and that piece are at least accurate. So I have a chance of making it square. So rather than using each subrail side as a template, I used the original one that I bent, put another one on top, made it exactly the same, and then flipped it over so we have the reverse curve over there. These cross pieces are tacked in at the distance right to left on the body that I measured before I took it apart and at the general right distance front to back before I took it apart. Again, these are only general because this was a problem. So this is where we've got to get a little creative and think, you got to let your eyes blur a little bit almost because we're not going to match this exactly. It has a lot of different stampings and things like that in it that we don't necessarily need. We need to figure out if we're close enough with our shape of our new sub rail to mount the body. Now the Model T body mounted to its sub rails basically by rivets, but the way the body mounted to the frame was different from front to back. So this is something to deal with when you have a hundred year old body that's been through a thousand different hands. I cut off this original mount. If you look, it mounted to the subframe in this riveted section. So this is where it's cut, cut here, cut here, and that corresponds to here and here. Now, if you look on the other side, someone had already been in there and repaired it with a piece of strap steel. So already, or not dealing with the same thing from right to left. Even if you went by what you had before, it might not be accurate. So you gotta think big picture and then work on how to make it happen in your situation. And honestly, we're gonna discover it as we go. We sure are, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, I'm already a little bit baffled. Let's take a look over here. So one of the challenges of trying to get this right is you know, this thing can flex in multiple directions as of right now. The only thing to stop that is bracing and attaching to the subframe. But we don't know how to do that until we sort of get it all stuck together. Let's, uh, let's, let's continue. At this point, I'm thinking I need to get this body somehow back together. From here, we can either work from front to back. So cowl, load the roadster doors on, front touring doors, you know, the thing. Or I can pull this section of the body up, attach the doors to this side, and then work towards the cowl. Because the cowl is in terrible shape, I think the thing to do is to start with the back. The problem is, I'm not sure how to get this thing up here by myself, but we'll figure it out. Here goes nothing. This is going to be a bit of a struggle. We have no room. That was super unceremonious. So it was like lifting a 200 pound water balloon. I don't recommend doing anything I just did. So we're just gonna skip how it came to be here. It is now here and let's take a look at the 632 new realities that we need to deal with. I mean, first of all, right? But you know, can, can you see it? Can you, can you? Anyway, that's, inspiring at least, but let's talk about what issues this is clarifying because now we can take a look at some of the body mounts, the way they were originally done, how far off the sub rails we are, and what appears to be a different and obvious issue. Part one, 
I left the sub rails, the new sub rails, long. They should end about here, but I decided, because I didn't know exactly where they went, because our other ones were too short, I left it long. This is going to be an impedance, I do believe. If we look inside there, you can see that mount, and this one's actually sitting, can you see that, right on the sub rail for right now. This is clearly screwed up and crooked, but we're in the neighborhood of where we want to be, I believe. Let's check against the other sub rail. One of the concerns I'm having now though, is do our sub rails need to come up off the table in order to meet the mounts? Because you can see here, we're floating quite a bit. And over here, I've got one patch panel tacked in and that's holding us way, way off the sub rail. So maybe I need to block this whole thing up. But again, we're now like in a position to start, you know, sorting all this stuff out, which is exactly where we need to be. All right, scoot right in here, fellas. So this is not in any way how I start patching things, but before we even get to cutting more metal out of this, it's like a sculpture, right? We're just, we gotta keep making it closer and closer and closer to the shape of the Model T. We're gonna go back over this stuff a million times and redo it all, but right now we're working so blind and everything's so loose, we've just gotta get closer to what it ought to be. So the way we're gonna do that is I have these patch panels from, I bought these from Howell, uh, not sponsored or anything like that, just letting you know in case you're looking for this type of thing, Howell sheet metal. I'm gonna use basic self-tappers. Yep, it's gonna put a hole probably where I don't want a hole to be, but I'm gonna be doing so much welding, plugging up a tiny screw hole is the least of my concerns at this particular juncture. However, like a patch panel, I only have, you gotta work with whatever frame of reference you've got. So right now, I have this curve for the bottom of the door, and I have this. This does not necessarily appear to have been a part, so we're gonna call that close. I'm gonna try to line this up with this. And then on the front, the very edge of my firewall is still full length, which should end up in a straight line from, you know, if this is lined up here, this part should be lined up down here with our firewall. Grab some basic spring clamps. I don't know if that'll work. A bigger Memo Jamo. Sometimes it doesn't take much. I'll bring you in for a closer look in a minute. So I've got a fold in my patch panel and you know, the patch panel is only gonna be so accurate, but we're gonna work with what we got because ultimately, if all the lines line up at the end, nobody's gonna know there was a patch or not. Where do I wanna do this? We'll do it up here. A lot more than I thought it would. A lot more uh, giving it to it. Now in theory, because it's only one screw in there, we're still able to pivot this backside just enough. So we're going to call that pretty good. Again, once we put the door in and the door line lines up at the top here, this curve may prove to be wrong. This may force the door high or low or whatever. So. We'll put one more screw in it, and then we'll adjust from there. All right, so my reference points were this break in the sheet metal, which lines up right here. It goes to the base, which lines up with the base of our firewall. And then as we cruise around here, our initial curve of our door is roughly the same height. 
So if this turned out to be accurate for this patch panel, we would just trim off this edge. Go ahead and just trim that off. And uh, that's about how it would fit. Cut it right at this line and then butt weld all of that. But for now, we're gonna work this way with our patches. Now this is in place, I just wanna show you the journey into the abyss that we are on, basically. So I never had the original sections that were in here. They were just very poorly patched with galvanized. So this is also from Howells, but it appears that that little bend, that that little bend actually tucks under the subframe. And with our subframe on our bench, we are not gonna be able to get this guy low enough. Next problem stays right in line. This patch goes here, also from Howells. So this has to match where the end of the front door goes. Potentially, I mean, I'm going to gonna say, because this is resting on the ground, on the ground, I'm sorry, because this is resting on our bench, which used to attach to the side of the sub rail, I'm gonna say we're kind of maybe okay here. Maybe, I don't know, it's a guess. And I will assume that the way we're building our subframe and the way we'd like this bottom line to look, this line should be in line with that line. Sorry, this line being the bottom here. So if it's flush with our workbench, we should be in good shape. Next problem, this door is square. From here down is a piece of bent galvanized garbage. If you look, sorry to spin you around, the stock door actually has a curve. So what I'm thinking now is we need to pop this door out, which is kind of tack welded on and helping to hold this body straight and get this door in before we get this patch. In doing that, we can work from a different line. We'll make the top of the door straight between this point and that point so that when we're done, that looks all kind of nice and sexy. We have to abandon this trajectory and start working from here. Replace this door with this door and we'll be closer to having accurate lines These hinges, not only have they, this may have been here, well, a guy would think if one's been replaced, maybe that broke, I don't know. This could have been in here a hundred years. I doubt it, but it's definitely been painted over by. But these function just like any other loose pin hinge, really. You just gotta get enough to knock it out of there. Time to bring you guys in for a closer look. So I was able to actually back out the original screws. Uh, these Model Ts are usually built with these square nuts. So this may be, very well be original. I popped the hinges off because our new door actually has hinges on it. So we will use those hinges and perhaps we can repurpose the hinges off of this back door for our front door. I don't know if they're the same, but it's Ford, so they probably are. Well, now we are more in a broken egg than omelet state. Nothing to fret too hard about. So I'm going to go ahead and tape a double stack of washers here, here, and here to sort of give us a door gap. And then we'll slide our new door in. I'm going to keep this really simple and really reversible. Like everything else, there's 20 ways to do this. You could weld these in, use wooden shims. Basically, I'm just using what I have. This is actually a really nice door. So this is how these, this hinge hardware works. Obviously, I'll get new versions of this later, but they slide in 
and they sit in a little recess in the sheet metal so when the hinge closes on itself there's nothing sticking up and I don't have a lot of this type of hardware in stock so we're going to try to reuse what we got but to do that we're going to slide the hinge in get the bolt through the hole then get through the bolt through the hole in the bracketry on the inside and I just can't see it I'll tell you what So kind of what needs to happen is this bottom hinge needs to come out. The tricky thing with adjusting Model T doors is the only access to the hinge is when the door is open. This is where we have to start wrestling it all into place. We're attached here, so I'm dragging all of this sheet metal around. And what I need to do is get the door situated on the back half, and that will actually place where this needs to be in a relative position. I mean, obviously, both sides technically move right now. However, this is much heavier, so I'm using it as an anchor. So I pulled the wood piece I had in here out. It was really just to help lift it and keep it stabilized uh, because it was just sitting on the ground. I didn't really measure that to be a real distance, but it has lessened the fight on this side, which is good. I went ahead and tech screwed in this patch panel. Basically, once we got the door in, I just jostled things around and it seems to line up here and we sort of have a straight line here and then I maintained my level on the ground kind of thing so that our rocker panel or whatever door sill thing stays in line. Next section working forwards. So let's take a look at the shape of that patch, it matches the shape of the door. If I get the door seated in that patch, we are too high. So, because I don't have a lot to work with, we're gonna go ahead and count on that being relatively close to the right shape. So basically, that screw, we need to move, remove it and adjust everything by lifting up the actual Model T part, leaving the patch in place roughly, oh, 3 16ths to a quarter of an inch, and then maybe this will be better, and then we will continue to move forward. Continuing on down our line, so if you eyeball that, you can see where it's all crooked. This section has to pooch out, and our door's got to go in. Let's see if we can make that happen. It's all super loose, so that's essentially what we need to have happen. However, let's take a look at that taper coming down from the back of the car. 
we are landing pretty close to where we want to be on the cowl. So we need to figure out what needs to happen here. Looks like the cowl's got to rock a little bit this way. It seems like we have more than enough room on this patch. So if I pull this screw out, let the cowl roll back like this, we should be pretty close to having this line up right here. So there we have it. It's a crooked line, but it's a line. We're sweeping up from the point we need to be on the cowl to our next piece, door. Well, that just came unclamped, but basically this line is doable at this point. So what we can do now, tomorrow probably, is tack that line in place, do the same on the bottom, tack it all the way up, and while we're at it, we'll just shuffle this all right to where it should be so that this whole side of the car has the right contour this way and has the right sweep this way, and then we'll be able to make the bottom work. Basically, we're gonna prioritize our lines, right? If you're standing near the car, this top line is gonna stand out to you, and then this line is gonna come out and stand out to you this way, and then we will do any of the fudging we need to fudge, if at all, on our bottom section, because that's gonna be the hardest part to see. So, it doesn't look like much, but this is in fact progress, and we'll need to repeat it on the other side, and then we have a ton more to do, but um, yeah, I'm just trying to show you all the steps, and it's gonna take a minute. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you wanna keep seeing how this is gonna go. I uh, Leave some comments too if it, there's thoughts. I mean, on the one hand, I want to show as much as I can in case somebody's never done this before, but I also don't want to bore the hell out of everybody because this, a lot of this can be very tedious. Um, but if you've never done it, maybe it's helpful. I don't really know. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time on Between the Sharks.